Hi, this is Pink Girly, and I'm uh, doing this recording as a live stream, and then I'll post it and make it public when I'm finished. This is an adult art channel, and um, today I'm going to do a page in my art journal, and uh, hopefully someone will be interested to join me and uh, watch what I do. I have a basic idea of where I'm headed. This wasn't uh, my original idea for this page. But I'll, I'll see how it works. And uh, with the Christmas season now over, I um, am going to be able to get this out of my brain, which is good. So this is my single entry ledger that I absolutely love. And I use it to practice drawing eyes. And I've got to do some more lips in here. I haven't really done too much with my lips yet. I'm trying to um, teach myself how to draw with the help of um, Kathy Arbor, actually, who has a YouTube channel and has been giving some art classes. And uh, she's been a great help to me. And of course, encouragement from Dee Dee Willingham, who also has a YouTube channel. You need to check out those two gals. And um, so when I would go to my craft shows this past year, I would take my ledger with me and uh, just really draw and doodle in the book. And then I thought, I, um, Kathy Arbor, uh, that's Arbor, A-R-B-O-U-R, if you um, want to try to find her channel. Um, she showed some of her artwork and um, I was encouraged and inspired to then turn my drawings into art journal pages. And so the first one in the book I did, um, I drew this face and then I put a wash of um, a flesh colored acrylic paint over it. And then I collaged, did some stenciling, some stamping. Um, I wanted to put November here. I didn't have, I don't have the year here. I should probably somehow get that in but this was my first page and I'm very I'm very happy with this it was fun to do and then as I I just kind of went through the book um, hit or miss page wise and drew whatever I felt like I wanted to draw so here are some eyes There's, they're not really finished they need some work on them there's a couple of pages in here. I'm not sure if I'll erase them out. Another set. I'm just going to walk through the book here. So you just get an idea for, and I'm not sure about what I'm going to do with all these pages with the writing on it, but I just absolutely love these old journal, uh, old um, ledger books. I have a couple of them now. <clears throat> a couple more. I need to finish some highlighting. those faces and I've got face there a couple of sketches here this is the really the only lip page I have let's see I've got all my jazz there I should have probably moved out of the way I don't want to take my camera up too far so you can see what I'm doing later Should have probably marked some of these pages. I like this face. <clears throat> that one, I added a nose and uh, some lips on it. These are just done with pencil. And um, one of those stumps or I forget what they call them. You know, that little rolled paper stump that you can smudge your... your uh, pencil do some shading and these are um, for the most part just um, eyes that I just started to draw and this is how they turned out here I started to date <clears throat> when I was making the drawings which was really a good idea this I'm trying to work and do um, a couple of Disney characters I may erase that I'm not sure I have to get back to that this one I just added some doodling 
This one I wanted to practice. I was at a show and I wanted to practice um, doing some fingers. So um, did that and uh, had my husband grabbing a book so I could see how his hands looked. Ah, he's a good guy. I hear a mustache. It's another one. So you can see they're all in progress. So I've got quite a few here that I can work and collage with. And uh, got that one. Of course, they're in various stages. This I was trying to do different. Uh, Kathy Arbor had um, encouraged us to work on some faces and um, some eyes and do different expressions. So these are my expression eyes i'm pretty well pleased with those again here i did a little wash of um i went through and did some patches just a wash of uh, flesh colored acrylic paint i really like how that looks though and then drawing on top of it so i need to put something on top of this guy let's see This is the page I'm going to be working on. I'm going to do a double page spread. So this, we're going to come back to this, page 78 and 79. And then I did these a little different. I'm almost definitely going to erase this. this I don't, I'm not sure about this one. This is, I was doing a manga, trying to do a manga. Manga, manga, however you say it. This, I saw a picture um, on the internet and liked this gal's face, so I tried to mimic that. So this isn't an original. This I copied from somewhere. We tried to copy. It's not too bad. Looks kind of like the original. And then I've got eyes here that are supposed to be Johnny Depp when he played the character in those uh, Caribbean movies. Doesn't look anything like him. My goal is to try to get myself to a place where I can draw a person's face and it looks like who it's supposed to. Uh -huh. Not there yet. A couple other ones in progress here. And then my second, um, this is my second page that I worked on in the book. I drew the Santa face and put uh, holly leaves down here in the corner. And the Santa, I decided to put color in his eyes, give his hat some color. I'm not thrilled about the dark around him. I may come back in with some kind of a red and um, kind of blend that out a little bit. I'm not quite sure what I want to do there, but I'm not totally happy with that. The background mostly is um, napkin. But other than that darkness around Santa, I'm pretty well pleased with how this spread turned out. I'm loving this ledger book. All right, so now I'm going to come back to page 78. My idea for this was a bunch of eyes looking through a jungle or leaves. And um, I'm not quite sure how I thought I was going to do that. But the first thing I wanted to want to do is I want to put a wash of maybe some light green. And then I thought maybe I would do like an ombre, try to do it darker at the bottom, lighter at the top. I might have a hard time blending that on this paper. And then I was thinking about using um, some of my Neo crayons. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure, but I cut out my leaves. I went through my collage bit stash and I cut out my leaves and I did place them on here and I did take a picture and I have them on my phone. So what I'm going to do now is just get some acrylic paint. I think we want to go ahead and do the acrylic paint wash rather than the watercolor. And hoping that I don't make too big of a mess where I have to... Um, 
you know, come back and try to fix it. So I might try to raise my camera a little bit so you can get more of my page. And I'm hoping that's clear enough. So I think I want to start out with, um, now all these faces, I did a wash of the uh, flesh over top of their face. Or I might have, I probably drew on top of the flesh. And I'm a big fan of green. So I think I am going to do, um, I might do lighter tones and darker tones at the bottom. I was thinking about adding in some brown. But I guess I can come back in afterwards and add the brown in. And um, just noticing, okay, good, I have the uh, water. So I'm going to use a bigger brush. This is an old Donna Dewberry brush, I think. Yeah, one stroke Donna Dewberry. So I'm going to put that in some water. And I'm just going to choose a light green color. I think I'm going to go with this... Uh, this is a folk art paint color, and it's called Fresh Foliage. So I'm going to just put a little bit of that out on my work mat here. And folk art paint is usually um, very thick. And that's why Donna Dewberry, I think, uses it for her one-stroke painting because it works well for that technique. And so I'm going to really water that down. I'm just going to put a sheet of um, my cardboard underneath. I use this, all this old, you know, stuff that the Tim Holtz stuff, you buy things or the backs of my paper pads. I keep all that scrap to put behind things I'm working on so it doesn't bleed through to the other side and I don't here it is I'm just going to add a little water from my spray bottle to my work area here and I don't know if you can really see over there I have my paint uh, right over in here I have my little paint work mat and I'm just going to say well here goes see how it turns out I was um, wanting to maybe live stream a little bit but I've been having trouble with um, my microphone screeching I have two computers here but the one is generally off so I guess it it was on and Goodness me, I had such a hard time. Okay, so I just mixed a lot of water in there. This is very liquidy, very um, even thinner than ink. And I just tapped off a lot of the moisture in um, on a paper towel. And I'm just, I don't want to go over my faces, of course. Again, I'm just going to go around them. Just trying to cover up that uh, ledger paper to some degree. And maybe what I'll do is I'll just... Now this guy is supposed to be behind something, so I'm going to go over that. Because I need to find something to glue there. And... Maybe I'll do this color for the whole page and then come back in with a darker green. Now I want to keep my ledger page numbers. I like the way they look. So I'm, uh, let me see, I'll move this down a little bit. So I'm trying to avoid, I don't want to paint over my ledger page numbers. This guy made his face much narrower than what I allowed for, for the flesh color. So I'm just going to paint over some of that. Now, other than putting the leaves on, I don't have too much of a, too much in my mind as far as how else I want to treat the page. I always like to put words 
of some kind when I do stuff like this. So I'm thinking about that, not quite sure what I want to put. And that may have to wait till another day. I don't want to rush it after all this. This face here, I'm not thrilled about. I'm going to cover that up. Now, I just, um, a friend had given me a bunch of old Martha Stewart living magazines. So I had gone through those and cut out a lot of collage bits. So I went through those this morning and I picked out leaves, basically just leaves. Some of them have a few branches. Now this one, I didn't get the flush down around the nose. So I'm going to see how that turns out. Yeah, maybe you'll, I don't know if you'll be able to hear my garbage truck has just arrived. You can hear the, I can hear the noise. So I'm, I'm thinking it, the camera may pick that up. Now I'm trying not to have this um, paint too terribly wet because I don't want to peel my paper. The ledger paper is on the thinner side. It is soaking up a lot of this. I don't really care about that guy. I'm going to cover him up. Um, really soaking up the paint. I need to get a little more. Kind of looks cool already. But I'm kind of trying to keep the paint a little on the drier side. Not using too, too much water. That's why initially I... Had, dabbed off a lot of the liquid onto a paper towel. Book art paint out of the jar a lot of, out of the little bottle a lot of times, that paint is really very thick. Now, I would suggest that when you do anything like this, make sure you mix enough paint in the beginning because even though this is the same color, depending on how much water I put in it, it's probably going to be a little different color-wise now that I'm adding it back in. This might be a little more liquidy, or not as liquidy as what I was using before. Put this down. And I'm going to use my uh, Golden Matte Medium to glue down my collage bits. And I'll probably will do some stenciling. Haven't thought about that either. But this is the fun of doing art journal pages, right? Journal pages. You just sit down, you have a basic idea, and then you go for it. Now, my page was kind of splitting a little bit on the bottom here, so I did put a piece of, um, I should have put some there too, but that'll glue. I'll glue that. These pages in this journal are very tender and can break very easily, especially when you're sitting at a craft show with your book on your lap trying to draw. So once I get this, I think I'm going to go with, let's see, maybe a medium, medium hauser. I've got some bits of paint here that weren't dissolved, but that's okay. Get up closer to this guy's face, come in here a little bit. I'm going to dry this, so I apologize for my heat gun. It shouldn't take too long to dry because there's not a lot of mostly water.
you have to be careful with the heat gun because sometimes I get too close to the paper and the heat gun gets so high. I have singed the paper on occasion. Now, using paper like this that really and a heavy liquid will get a lot of warping and maybe some wrinkling, but you know what? I'm okay with that. I really kind of like how the pages look when they get a little warped. Not sure why that is, but I really like it. Okay. So let's see, where is mine? I have a leaf green. I think that might be a little too bright. I'm halfway through straightening up my craft room. And uh, I've got stuff stacked everywhere. So I'm trying to see my paint really well. And let's see what this one is. Here it is. Medium green. Hauser medium green. And this is a Deco Art Americana color. And I don't want it to be too dark at the bottom. I do have an avocado that I like or a gamel green, but that tone might be a little different than this. So maybe I'll just stick with this. And then if I need to come in and paint over anything, I can do it after I have my uh, collage pieces down. So I just put that medium house of green on my work mat, added some water, and I'm just mixing it around with my with my brush. And this time I'm going to start at the bottom and see how this goes. I do love green. I'm going to make it more um, swatchy looking there. I use a lot of technical terms when I'm arting. So, you know, if you're not familiar with swatchy, don't really even know what that means. Well, maybe I'll put a little up here. I'm not too sure how much of this is going to peek through when I'm done. I could have used my comb brush, which would have given this a little more of a texture look. I've got a couple of tears here, but... So if I'm going to go this route, maybe a darker green wouldn't be too bad. Maybe I will get my comb brush. If I can find that quickly. Yeah, here it is. I like to sit that in water and let that, my comb brush, look how beat up my brushes are. I'm terrible with my brushes. I've had this for a long time. This is a Princeton. I call it a comb brush. I don't know if that's really what it is. It's, um, I don't know if you can see, there's like a little, little ridge there where it's all the same length brush to that point. And then it's like it had a haircut and they thinned out the bristles. Let's see. I usually have too many Hauser greens open. This one doesn't have much left in it. Again, this is Deco Art Hauser Dark Green. I'm not going to use too much of this. And I don't want to take out too much water out of the comb brush because I want to be able to make little streaks. 
and let that paint move. Let's see, what do I have here? Oh, I can just use this, I guess. I just want to be able to get like, um, I use this for trying to do pet hair and Santa beards and I just want some thin lines like this and a hashtag kind of a look. Let's see if that works. Now I don't want to put that under my page. Uh, so I'm going to just go. Like this. So last night, a gal by the name of Sharon Marlowe was live streaming. Check out Sharon's channel. And um, I was trying to join in. But every time I did, oh my gosh, I had such a scream and whistle. I could not figure out how to be able to join that stream without um, disrupting their audio. My nephew tells me, yes, if I have two computers on, the two microphones will interact with each other and cause um, you know, those tonal noises and the screeching and I thought I had everything turned off, but apparently I didn't. So I'll try to work that out. I'm just um, adding hashtag type marks where I think it will look good. I kind of forget my layout. I should probably check that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's going to be covered up there. So let's put something down here. Now I'm going to dry this again. Because then I'm going to come in with my um, matte medium. And I really think it's kind of looking a little cool already, right? I think I'm going to need a couple of extra pieces of collage bits. But maybe I'll add a butterfly something like that some butterfly wings or something like that that will help fill in some of the spots so let me do the heat gun real quick Trying to increase my YouTube uh, subscriber list, so I'm making some progress there. But I want to be more um, conscientious about doing videos and some live streams in 2020. say if you touch your paper and it feels cold it's still still damp and not quite dry but it feels pretty dry and I've got to lay out my lay out my foliage that I've cut out now let me see if I can do this and remember where I have things haha <laughs> all right so I was going to cover up this guy here so I'm thinking I'm going to put this large leaf there. 
Alright, and then I have this bright colored leaf to go up here. I don't want to cover up my page numbers again. So that one I'm going to put up there. I'm trying to work right on this left hand side of the page first. Now, this is not set in stone, so probably I'm going to move some things eventually. But for now, I'm going to lay it out like I have it on my picture. Um, some of these leaves all look the same, guys. So this might take me a few minutes. I think I had this one. That might be a little too large for there. there hmm. now, I'm not liking some of these sharp edges that I have here so just my brain my my mind is starting to spin I'm wondering eh, uh, what am I going to do? I think I had this one up here. Uh, I mean, this is a good idea to take a picture so you know where you, once you've laid it out, so you know where you want things. But it's still not easy. Because a lot of this stuff looks the same. <laughs> Okay, this guy, I know I want over here. Like that. And this one. Hmm, there. And it's always better, I think, to have more collage than what you think you need rather than less so I wish I did have a little bit more but I always I can always come back and add I've been thinking about this page for so long I just decided I was going to take this morning and do it so I can get it out of my head Dee Dee Willingham was, um, gosh, when was she streaming? She was streaming, oh, it was New Year's Day? No. Oh, it was um, the New Year's Eve streamathon. And she was encouraging uh, folks that if you have ideas, art ideas or whatever, to um, write everything down. Because then at least you can get it out of your brain. And boy, I certainly understand what she means by that. All right, this is, uh, oh, it's this one here. Here, let's see. And I'm trying to put them, some of them where they kind of are enclosing the eyes, the sets of eyes. Not sure where I had this. I'm not sure I like where I had that guy. Uh, whoops! Knocked into my brushes. And even if it goes off the page, that's okay because I can trim that out later. Trim my page. I don't have too many more leaves left. I'm not sure where I had this guy. I need something up here under this guy's face. Oop. Hmm, I'm not liking that so much. Hmm. 
Now I was thinking about maybe putting this big butterfly in here rather than this leaf. That's kind of cool. Maybe I can cut out the smaller bunch of leaves and put I wanted to try to get my most of this fussy cutting done um, off screen so you didn't have to watch me cut. But being as I don't have a whole lot of choices, I don't have a lot of extra leaves. I'm just going to go ahead. Everything else on the page is... Um, more to this size so this big leaf kind of is a little distracting for me anyway of course that butterfly is really big i have other butterflies but i'm just not sure i don't know about you but when i clean up my art space here sometimes i move things and find a new home for them. Well, I remember where I used to have them. I don't remember where I now put them. So I'm not sure I can find my butterflies very easily. I don't know if this, I don't think this is a Tim Holtz. No, this is uh, from a paper pack. But I have some Tim Holtz butterflies too. Butterflies were not my original in my original plan. But I think they'll be a nice addition. All right, maybe if I put this. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. If I go that way. I've said this before, I love my acrylic nails, but sometimes it's really difficult to do what you want to do with acrylic nails. I don't know if I want that there. Hmm. I think I'll cut that off and do that. Hmm. I have this bigger leaf here. Oh, that's too much. I need something down here. I think I kind of like that there. I think I'm pretty much going to go with this layout. So then all I'm going to do is put out a little bit of uh, matte medium. I have my glue brushes in a separate jar back here. Just sitting in water. And that's a D.D. Willingham tip. Works out well. And so now I'm just going to start gluing down. And I think I'm going to put a little bit of my medium in one of these little paint dishes. Maybe sit back there while I'm working across. So I'm just going to go for it. Put a little bit on the back of the piece and then a little bit on my ledger paper. I'm 
and then a little bit on top. Probably should not use my finger. wonder sometimes if it would be easier if I just did this did whatever project I'm, I'm doing and then didn't talk while I was doing it which may be hard because I talk to myself while I'm working and then come back and do a voiceover a lot of folks do that. Oh, always get a message. Oh, geez. My phone's probably about ready to go crazy. Today is my niece's birthday. Whoop. over here in the drawer. Hopefully we won't hear it too much. Okay, I have to do the highlight in this guy's eyes before I'm done. I use Mod Podge as my glue a lot of times. But because um, I want to be able to close my book and not have it stick to anything, I tend to find that the Mod Podge, while I use it quite a bit, it doesn't seem to dry totally for me. And then my, my stuff sticks together or it's it sticks. Like if I use it on the outside, if I collage, um, oh gosh, they're going to be beeping on my computer. Uh, not sure how I can do this. Let me see if I can leave this group. Um, uh, let me see. Okay, I'm going to see if they can remove me from that while I'm recording. I should want some tin cans, and they were real cute. <clears throat> but then when I set them on a shelf, they kind of stuck themselves to the shelf. I couldn't get the uh, Mod Podge to dry. So I've switched over to the matte medium. seems to work out better. Now I don't really want to, yeah that'll work. It's a big area but I didn't want my butterfly to go into the crack of the book. I do apologize for all that dinging.
oops, I forgot to put it on the back. I do find that if you put the glue on the back, you know, on your surface and then on the back of whatever you're gluing down, um, you do get a better stick. Get this right in the right. I'm going to make sure I cover that. Got a little nose there. Woo! Picking up my leaf. It's just got a little sparkle to it. I hope it stays sparkly. Let's smash this down. Just using an old credit card. I kind of smush this down. some glue under there and if I do have to use my finger I always make sure I put some of the medium on my finger because if you don't then you uh, stick to your to whatever you're gluing down which is not good You know, when you're doing this kind of arting or journaling or anything that you really are interested in and you enjoy, it doesn't seem like it takes you that long. But when you look at the timer or the clock, it takes longer than you think. I always think, well, I don't want to keep people, you know, watching me for that long. But you can always fast forward, scrub through the video or turn it off. If you need to be somewhere else. Uh, sometimes I do part one and part two, but I really hate doing that. Some of these pieces are going to overlap, and I think that's good. Of course, I wanted something down here over this tape. So I've got to think about that as well. No, I'm doing it again. I'm not putting the glue on the back. And anywhere I see where I missed, come back and brush a little more glue on top. And like I said, these these uh, pieces that are hanging off the page, when I'm all done, I'll come back and trim those. Need a little more of my medium. <clears throat> and I just have this in a an empty uh, soap dispenser. Uh, dish soap dispenser. That's also a idea I got from Dee Dee Willingham. I'm not sure that it was her I original idea, but it sure is a good tip. It's so much easier. Sometimes I even just squirt it right on my brush. It's so much easier than having to open the big tub and dump out some of the product.
I really like squishing it out with my finger. I feel like I get a get it smoother. My paper towel here. And this guy I'm going to put down here. This is kind of just hanging on by a thread. I want that right up under that fella's nose. That'll overlap on that leaf. That's cool. Cool, cool, cool. I don't want to put too much in the ditch, but this little bit in the ditch will probably be okay. Some grow on the other side here. Uh, let's see. Sometimes I use a, um, no, this will work, I think. Yeah, it's an emery board. Into the ditch. I could cut that. I could cut it too, but it's just a very thin, this is just magazine images. And so the paper is very thin. Uh, it's dry. Now this guy, I don't want to cover up my little nose. So I'm going to make this one come down like a teardrop. I'm not paying attention to the camera, whether I'm in camera or off. And there we go. I guess they didn't take me off. Ah! I want this to curve around this guy's face. Of course, my phone is just about dying, so if it dies, then we won't hear any more of that. Ding, ding, ding. Somebody in the family has a birthday. We always do a group message. And, oh no, I want to get this right. This one I want to be up around her eyes. And we say, let's celebrate, you know, whoever. And then we say things about that individual that we appreciate or love just as an encouragement, make their day a little more special. So that's what's going on with all the dinging. My niece is 31 today. See, I'm just about at an hour. And ah, 
Ah, we really made a big wrinkle. Oh, I think I forgot to put, oh, maybe I put some down. You probably to get enough. And they're already glued down. I think that's everybody. Boy, it'd be nice to have a leaf there. I think that might be all of them. I think I've got them all glued down. This dries pretty quickly as well. So now I'm thinking about what else I might like to put on here. I'm going to fill in with some um, stamping. I love my stamps. I have this little script stamp that I use quite a bit. I wish it were a little bigger and a little more scripty, but this is what I have. So this is what I'm going to use. I'm going to have to dry this a little bit. And I'm going to stamp with stays on because it won't bleed if I um, put any more moisture on the page. And I'm going to use this gothic purple. I love green and purple. They're my two favorite colors, and I love the way they look together. So I'm going to just do some stamping. I think I need some kind of a message or something down here. I'm not quite sure. And then I have this really fun um, swirl stencil. I think I want to do that in white. Put some swirls on the page. I don't stencil very well. Keep trying to practice and get better, but I don't do it very well. So that's also on my mind. I'm just not sure that I want to add... Oh, you know what? I just bought some. What did I do with those? I just bought some stamps that were leaves, pieces of leaves. Oh, they might look kind of cool. Let me get down. Aha! Uh -huh. The brain kicked in. I've got that. And I've got that. Like, I don't want to add another. Oh, I think I might have just knocked the camera. Sorry, kids. I don't want to add another um, element. Like, I just wanted to keep it to the eyes, the leaves, and then that butterfly. I don't even think I want to add additional butterflies. But I have stays on in the green as well. Maybe green on green. Now I just need to decide what I want to do first. Um... Well, these are kind of pet, and of course, these are leaves. I stopped in. I was visiting my sister in PA, and she's not too far from a Tuesday morning. And I went over there and did a little damage. Kind of like this stamp. I'm going to use my block, at least for the leaves. Boy, they really put these on here. I'm always afraid my stamp is going to tear in half. It never does. And then I like to stamp onto something 
as a test. Make sure I've inked it fairly well or, you know, whatever. And sometimes I'll use um, not the first stamp because I may not want the image as dark. So I also have stays on. This is called citrus green ink. And it might not be as dark as I'd like, but let's see how that let's see how it looks. So let me just ink up my I may not even really like this. We'll see. That's pretty cool. That'll work. Hmm. That might be cool there. Of course, my leave, I mean, my eyes are the main focus of my page. So these are, don't have to be too tremendously in your face. Um, I'll try to balance it so I have them on both pages. And I think I'm going to go over here and run this partially off the page. Cool. Cool. I like that little whoop. All right. So then I've got a bigger one here. It's more like, a, I don't know. I guess that's a maple leaf. I don't I don't know what this leaf is. I'm wondering if it will look good here. Let's see what this looks like. That's not big enough. that up see how that looks for Christmas I found a um, a use I had, I had maybe 12 to 15 crayon of the crayons and I was wanting more it's, it is one of my favorite mediums to work with Look, I got a look. This is picking up a little bit here. I gotta fix that. And uh, they were someone else had used them, I guess, for whatever reason, wanted to get rid of them. So I got those the other day. So I've been, I did um, swatch. Um, but I'm thinking maybe I need to get those out and go around some of these images to kind of give a little more depth to the page, to the spread, as they say. It's not that quite thick there. Hmm. What did I do? Oh, girls and boys. See, look what I just did. I put this in my wet paint. Boy, I could have done a lot more damage with that than I did. Oh, boy. Note to self. Clean up your mess so you don't make more of a mess. Thinking, oh, I thought that was glue. No, that's paint. A wacko. Now I dropped my ink pad. It's all downhill, right? All downhill from here. Whoop. Mm. 
I'm going to put another one of these. Maybe this curved leaf might look cool. Oh, we've got them going both ways. And then this little tiny leaf is cool. If you take this stamp and set it on your piece, sometimes you can get an idea if you like it or not. See, if I put that there, it kind of would look like a tattoo, I think which would be cool. I'm going to go back to the smaller block. So if I do that, I want that to curl around the eye. I don't think I want that to dark so I'm gonna just use that second it might not be dark enough what do they call it second generation stamp I think is what they call it yeah you can't really see it so we're gonna we're gonna do that again you know I wonder if that would be better in black let's do it in black or a sepia, something more like that. I have some archival inks that are also permanent and won't move once you stamp them down. But you want to be careful of, you know, you want to be conscientious of that. All right, I've got coffee and I've got a plum. I forgot the sepia. Let's try the sepia. I'll stamp it out on this other paper. See if I like the color. Good stamp or it's not. I don't blur it. Great. Oh, cool. I really like that. Really, really like that. Now there's one going the other way. I think if I use that maybe up here, that'll look sweet. It's smaller, but that's okay. Excellent. Nice. And then I think I want so I have this more of a sepia ready brown color in this leaf here. So maybe, let me just see how dark it is. The second generation stamp. Maybe I won't do it as dark. Hmm. Let's do that. Oh, 
Whoa. Cool. Cool. All right. So I think that might be enough for that. Boy, I really got this guy squared off. I need to do something there to try to soften that. See what else can I do? Hmm. I could put a swirl there. I don't want to put too much of this on here, but that would work. I'll let that go. Well, let it go, kids. Let it go. Let it go. All right. Now to address this spot where I have I didn't glue it down as well as I should have I'm just going to take a little bit of my oh I never can remember the name of this glue one girl I was watching on the stream she called it weird glue so now that's what I'm going to remember it as um art glitter glue I think it's called there's no but there's no glitter so it really throws me off but it sticks down very well and it sticks quickly so I'm just going to put a little bit of that underneath where I've got that um, butterfly wing popping up now I'm going to come in with my put a little more glue there I'm going to come in with my um, purple ink and stamp my script in a variety of places. I'm going to need something up here too. Close my glue. Of course, I have a little nose here that was part of that face I covered. So I'm going to need something there as well. All right, cover up what I'm not using. And I'm going to get my, I did have an arrow on here to show me which way the script is. But that's worn off. I think it's this way. And we'll do the test again. Snap it off. I also wish this wasn't so square. I probably wonder if I could just kind of like tear that. But anyway, this is what I have to use. I don't think I have anything else. That would be better. So sometimes what I'll do is, let me do that. Take a piece of paper. I'll put it on either side. I use the torn spots. Let's see if that helps make this not look. Oh, that's not bad. Because then it's stamped on the paper. And I only got a portion of the stamp, which is what I wanted. I just don't want it to be real square. <clears throat> so I'm going to go like that. Good. That's good. And I'll just stamp off the edge of the page. I'm 
trying to remember where I put my new Neo 2 crayons. Got this one a little crooked. It's okay. In some places, I just want a hint of the stamp. I'm going to get some on this butterfly. so sticky sometimes and then it just ripped it look what it did it ripped the edge of my wah, wah. that's not good so I'm going to take my little paper here that's protecting the underneath and I'm going to take some of that art glitter glue and just see if I can repair that a little bit And then see if I can find something to glue on top. Well, I didn't expect that to happen. I've used this stamp quite some time, and they tend to lose their sticking. I mean, they're sticky on the back, so they stick to the block. But that's really sticking. Um, hmm. All right, we'll live, we'll live. I'm trying, I need to remember where I put my Neos because I really think I need to. I think I want a little bit of this. I don't necessarily want the stamp in the eye but I want the stamp a little bit on that flesh there. Sweet. I like that. do a little bit up here as well but secondary I'm not going to re-stamp see if I can get a little bit on this guy's cheek okay cool of course look I just put this in the paint don't do what I do do as I say I should have cleaned up that mess and I didn't I got my paint over there on my work mat All right, so I think that's all the stamping I'm going to do, at least at this point. I can always come back in and add, right? So then I want to do some swirls, but I think I really want to put some color around the leaves. And I, I still haven't thought of what kind of um, message I might like to put in my book. All right, so this is my tub of Neo 2 crayon, Neo Color 2 crayons. They're an older, ver well, I'm assuming they're an older version because 
Um, most of them, see now this one says moss green, but this is one that I, I purchased before I got this set. And a lot of these, they just have the number. They don't have the name of the color. And uh, my brain kind of works with the name of the color. So I swatched them. Of course, my swatch book is in the other room. But that's okay. But I want something dark. And I'm not sure I'm, I'm going to have something as dark as I want. This might be a... This is a gray. Hmm. See, I don't want to do the same thing I did on that Santa and have it too dark. And that might not be dark enough. Mm -mm. This one's not dark enough. I'm trying to think of what else I might have. Even in the color pencils, I use Prisma color pencils, but even in those, um, Oh, that's 249. This is 225. I don't seem to ever have a dark enough green or a dark enough blue. So I need to go with something. Um, oh, maybe a purple. Maybe a purple. This is aubergine, I think. And look, that kind of matches the... Um, I got a cup of coffee sitting here, and I'm thinking, eh, but I end up putting my brush in there. Oh, yes, I think that's what I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with the aubergine. Now, where did I set it down here? So we're going to use the aubergine, and I'm going to come around my collage bits that I glued down and try to do a little bit of shading and see how this works and I would like a nice round brush I don't have much in the way of rounds or maybe a um this will work a um oval I think that's what they call it filbert oval brush will work now I don't want to you cut I could draw on here and then uh, wet it, but I don't think I want to do that. So I'm just going to take the color from the end of the crayon and this is crazy, but sometimes I just test it on my skin. So I don't want it too dark until I see what's what. That's not quite dark enough. You know what? I'm making myself crazy. It's still wet there. Let's do it here. Of course, I want to blend that out. Hmm. I wonder how it would be if I did it. Um, let's do a little test. Oh, you can't see me down here. Let's do it while I do it there. It doesn't work out. Can you see me down here just a little bit? I'm going to just do a little color a little bit along the edge here.
see once if I do that then once that dries a little I think I can come back in and move it so let me try it here because it's watercolor I don't know. I don't know if you can really see that. Might want it to be a little more intense. I don't have a whole lot of water in my brush. It's carrying a lot further than I thought it would. Now see once that dries I can come back in and soften the edge which is really what I what I want to do all right so that's what I'm going to I'm going to just um, color a little bit around the edge I said I wasn't going to do this but this seems to be working out better because I want more of an intense um, color next to my leaves. I'm taking most of the moisture out of my brush. And then softening up. I hope you can see that. What I'm doing. Let me bring the camera down a little bit. I don't have to really see the whole at this point. I really truly am going to end up putting my brush in that coffee. So I'm just going to come around here just to make it a little quicker. I just outline all my leaves with this aubergine. Neo color two, and this is number 99. Color is called aubergine. Just so happens that's the color my maid of honors wore in my wedding. A little trivia. Now, when I get all this done, it's just going to take me a little bit. I'm going to come back in with my white paint. And uh, put some swirls. I hope I don't mess it up. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do about these tears. Because they're not in great spots for me to, to glue things on top of, you know. Oh my gosh, it's an hour and a half. Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to end this video. I'm going to finish doing the shading with uh, my watercolor crayon. 
and then I'll do my swirls and I'll think about what kind of words I want to put on the page. And once I have all that mapped out, I'll just do a short video to finish up. I'll put the swirls on and whatever wording I decide. And it'll just be a quick video to finish up to show you the finished pages. So I think that's what I'll do. That makes more sense to me. And I'm getting a little hungry for some lunch anyway. So, all right. So let me close out this video. Thanks for joining me. I hope you join me in the next one. Again, I'm Pink Girly or Lori. I do have an Etsy shop, which is under time to be creative, time like the spice. The number two, the letter B, creative. And I would encourage you to take time to be creative and to enjoy the journey. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.